Heidi has been laying down more and chewing her cud less. Uh, a ruminant that is not chewing her cud constantly means there's something off when they're due to lamb. It just means that they're probably having contractions. They're a little distracted from their chewing of cud. And she's been up and down more. And I feel like I'm seeing a lot of movement in her belly. And um, with goats, it's a little bit easier to go in and assist unless she's actually in full active labor and seems to be in distress. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do anything um, because it's gonna stress her out more. What you doing, Mama? Are you not feeling good? Usually she'll come up right to the gate and ask for grain and kind of look at you. But her eyes are down. She's not chewing her cud. Um, I'm a little bit. I'm a little tempted to check her and just see if anything in there is backwards, but. Um, if she's not far enough along, it can mess things up for her. If I if I go in and, and check her with my hand, it can it can mess things up. But I do feel like she's breathing differently. She's looking a little more mellow. They have plenty of hay. They're still getting a little bit of grain. How you doing, Mama? I hope we get babies. That would be fun today. Okay, so we have been checking on Heidi around the clock because her due date was on the 12th. Sounds like we got babies. Paige went out to walk the dog. Did you get a little grain? But she says the babies are shivering. Hi, little mama. You got two little boys. Good job, mama. Okay, we're going to go in and help you get some nursing done. All right, I'm getting old hay from here in the sheep and goat eating area. Putting it in the sled and taking it to the greenhouse to make a nice bed for the lambs. The lambs are big enough to start going over the sides of the bathtub so they need a warm place where they're safe but where they can also play. The more they move the more they'll eat the more they eat the healthier they get and the more ready they are for spring. If you can see the steam Hard for me to freehand it. So there's the steam from the hotbed. This part is already planted. And this is what I'm doing with old waste hay for the lambs. Okay, here's Heidi. Here's little baby one and little baby two. And they are so cute and they're not shivering and their little bellies are full. Oh, you need some more water, mama. Okay, I gotta go get her some more water. There's her minerals, there's her water. We don't have her big water container out here. So we have to bring out water frequently. And you see what she's doing where she's kind of walking in circles? The lambs have had to figure out how to nurse her when she's walking in circles. Hi, little one. You should go nurse because I don't have any milk for you. I did not bring a bottle out. I did force feed these guys with a tube their first day uh, in the house. So we gave them, we tried to get them on bottles the first little bit and they didn't go and they just were not, were not thriving. So I went and got a force feeding tube and we fed them really well about three times 
And then what happened was I was walking the babies out to the greenhouse and they started calling for mama. It was obvious they still knew who mama was. They were not on the bottle very good yet. They'd been alive for about 24 hours, maybe 36 hours. I was taking them out to the greenhouse to let them play and warm up. And they started calling for mama. And when they called for mama, I was waiting to see, was she gonna call back? And she wasn't as interested as the day before, but she did call back a little bit. So we brought him in here with her. And um, just, we, Kaya actually stayed out with here with her for 12 hours. Kaya got on her snow pants and just came out and sat with her for 12 hours so that Heidi would calm down. And we fed her a little tiny bit of grain and sunflower seeds every two hours so that we, she would stop it pacing and let them nurse. She kind of rejected them a little bit in that she'd sometimes like push them a tiny bit with her nose, like she didn't recognize them. But then um, here we are. The reason we were able to do it because we had a bright sunny day where we had that warmth coming through that window. So I force fed them before we brought them out uh, with that tube. So the bellies were full and they were warm. You can't eat their ring, mama. It's not meant for sheep. And um, and again, she did cry out for them a little bit as I walked past. And so we brought them in. We closed them up so that the goats couldn't get in and hurt her. It's not for you. And um, here we are. And she's a little bit of a restless mama. But you see, she's holding for a minute. She really likes somebody out here to keep her company. She likes people to keep her company because she's a bum lamb herself. So, I We're keeping her in here until they're a little stronger and the weather's a little warmer. And the reason for that is that she does pace. And if she had too much space to pace in, she uh, I don't think they could catch her and nurse. So I'll go in and show you her milk that we milked from her. But they're looking really, really good. And this lets us handle the lambs too. They won't be as attached to us as they would be if they were bottle lambs, but um, they just need to be used to being handled. And they, it's really nice that they're attached to mama instead of us, because then they become a flock instead of them crying or being upset when we go in the house. Hey mama, I'm gonna go get you some more water. Okay, Paige. So that's sheep milk from one morning milking when she was two days into her um, motherhood. Okay, this is the goat pen, but we currently have the sheep in it. But I wanted also, to sh Kaya and I are almost off the grain. Is she getting in the shed? Then I guess you need to clip them, honey. That would be silly. Okay, I want to show you what I did on this end. That's not open, that's clear plastic. I have a layer of clear plastic on the inside of the pallet and on the outside of the pallet. So it's a, a two plastic dual wall system. And what it's doing is it's letting light and heat in on this side and so the even though it's just a single wall, just junky old tarp, it's much warmer inside the shelter than outside the shelter. Even with the bright sunshine today, it's warmer inside that shelter because of this southern facing double wall plastic on these pallets. Because the pallets have slats in them, which means sunlight can go in. And so it's, it's really like a passive solar it's heating the inside of that building just from the sunlight coming in through those slats. Let me show you how this works. I have a double plastic layer on these pallets that are on the south side. And what it does is it lets heat in. It traps it like a greenhouse, so it's passive solar. Even though it's just a tarp that's on the top, it is warm in here compared to outside. Also, there's her hay rack that she also has access to, but 
we gave it to her in a box so that she definitely has enough. You can see she's nursing little babies. She's calming down every single day. The inside of this shelter is lined with feed sacks. The outside of the shelter is lined with a, with a tarp. And then I had this clear plastic that was old and you can see it's broken, but uh, it doesn't really matter. It holds the wind off a little bit, but that's all. We don't get wind from the north unless we have a really, really heavy snow. And um, even then, I'm not sure how much would come in. We haven't had any kind of problem with snow getting in here. You see, there's a little tiny bit of snow right there at the entrance, but not much. But you see, she's contented, especially if I'm out here, she's contented. Um, she's used to having the goats with her, but the goats would bully up and be really rough on these babies. And so we couldn't let the goats be in here but it snowed last night and the goats needed shelter, so we moved them over to their other barn. You see, she has plenty of wool on her. She doesn't need any extra insulation, but the babies don't have that much wool on them. And so that's why they have to nurse about every 10, 15 minutes. It's much better for them to be out with mom and nursing every 10 or 15 minutes instead of having us feed them every two hours. Their little bellies are meant to have food on a very, very regular basis. The other thing that keeps it warm in here is that old hay and sheet manure has built up and layered up so there's a little bit of compost heat from the deep mulch system. Are you chewing your cud? You're such a good mama. You're such a good mama. Why does everybody want to eat my ring? You and the turkeys. Um, and the dog. So I'm kind of tempted just to sit out here with her and make sure they're getting enough for just a little bit because she she was crying a little bit when I left. Not because she loves me, but because she would like to have a bigger flock to be with right now. She would really love a bigger flock. It makes sheep and goats, anything that's a ruminant, anything that's a prey animal, like these guys are, a ruminant, um, they're gonna feel better when they're around their companions. So, her chewing her cud is a sign that she's calm and contented. And see, baby was nursing, and then he was like, oh, I'm, I think I'm almost done. I think I'm almost done nursing. And they'll kind of walk away for a minute, but if mama will hold still a little longer, they'll keep it up until mama wants to walk away. Good job, mama. It's like, um... She's standing still a long time. I'll keep trying. Also, them nursing helps her uterus to, to go back to its original size. So it's good for her too. Hi, little baby. Um, hi, little baby. Yeah, it's good for her to be nursed. And if they're not out here to nurse, only milking them a couple times a day doesn't help keep her milk up enough. And she does have an easier side. This is her easier side. And there being two babies is very helpful with nursing because they can kind of trap her a little bit, one on one side, one on the other. It kind of keeps her, her mind a little, a little disconnected from what's going on. And later when they get older, they'll be so big that they actually can trap her for half a second. She'll have to hop over them to get away. And so it's very, it's very amazing the way that it works. Hi little baby. Hello, baby. All right, this is some of Heidi and Midge's wool. I've already used one bag and I've got two and a half more that I could use. And wool makes a really great substrate underneath the potting soil. It's really amazing. Um, I have not washed it. It hasn't been washed with soap. And um, it just, I, we need to shear Heidi again this year, soon. And so I don't need the wool. There's no point in having it stack up. It's just more wool than I can use. That's 
what it looks like. That's two feed sacks full of wool. And so for this one, I could probably get away with one more bag. I don't know if I'm going to use any more though. So I'm going to water this in with some rabbit manure tea. And then I'm going to put the potting soil on top. Here's Heidi and her babies. Let's make sure she has enough water. She's got water. Hi, Mama. Hi, baby. What you doing? Where's the other baby? There's the other baby. So it took her two days to really have strong enough babies that they could be out here in this cold when you're at minus Fahrenheit. Um, babies that are born in those temperatures just take a little bit more going. So they had to come in the house for a couple days. We brought them out to, to visit mama, but they could only come out when it was a really bright sunny day because even in a really bright sunny day, you're only 10 above Fahrenheit. So, and then after that, Kai had to come out and sit with Heidi for a full day to help her not be too nervous so that she'd stop pacing so that she'd nurse him and now they're doing great. I'm just out here checking to make sure she's got enough food. Looks like she's, she's got some food. And that little shelter has been awesome. It looks not so great, but it's been awesome. Um, Hotbed has some dirt on it. I really don't know what you guys can see. If you can see the steam. The, the funny thing is they don't really hurt much. They come in and they just nibble on it and they eat the earwigs if they catch bugs or anything in it. Hey guys. What you doing? That's just my ring. <laughs> you guys are funny. <laughs>